Here we go. All right, so the other day I found an EPR that wasn't adjusting correctly. Um, so now today we're here, we're gonna go ahead and change it out. So I believe we already have this thing pumping down. So we got this EPR right here, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off that liquid line. We're gonna let this thing start pumping down. A lot of the times what I'll do is I'll get valve core removal tools. I'll go from the liquid line to the suction line and I'll start pumping out that line. It's just a lot easier way, a lot quicker way to pump out these line sets. Um, and then because this is already a brass body, this is a sport too already, all we're gonna end up doing is just replacing these guts, right? So typically if this was a steel body, let's see, we got any steel bodies? So like these over here, if we're working on one like this, where it's a steel body like that, I would go ahead and unsweat the whole thing and replace it with that sport too, uh, just because it has that brass body. So that brass body's not gonna rust. But since this one's already a brass body, we're gonna go ahead, we're just gonna replace the guts on this one. So that's, we're gonna start getting this thing pumped down and then we'll get to it. All right, so we got valve core removal tool here, valve core removal tool there up on that liquid line. We're gonna go ahead and hook up this hose. And we're just gonna go straight from that liquid line to this suction line. Purge it a little bit. Make sure you purge that air out of that line. And then boom, you just let it rip. So now we're transferring straight from the liquid to the suction. It's just a lot easier and faster way to pump a circuit down than just turning off that liquid line and waiting. So now we just watch this gauge and we wait for it to go to suction pressure. All right, so we got this new valve here. So if you remember from that uh, previous video, this valve is a 5.7 and it was having issues adjusting because they put those medium temp doors on so it made this thing too big, right? It was oversized. So now we got this 3.7 and all we're gonna do is because it's the same valve body, it's already a brass body, we're just gonna take off this section, take off this section in the new valve, take off this section of the old valve and then that's it. We're just gonna replace those guts. Easy peasy. All right, so you can see here, we're pretty much done with liquid. We're just pulling out vapor now. So I'm looking over here, we're at about 60 pounds. Let's do that. We're at about 60 pounds on this gauge. So I'm gonna go check our suction to see what we're pulling on our suction. What I wanna do is try to get that line set as low PSI as I can before we open it up. So you can see right here, we're probably running at about suction right now, with that being 53. And we got almost all of our compressors running. I'm gonna manual on all the compressors that I can in order to pull that suction down as much as I can. Worst case scenario, we just toggle off a couple systems over there and we pull that suction header down. But I'm gonna do this first. All right, and then since I have a variable speed compressor, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna go ahead and manual this one to 60 hertz as well. So we can get 100% out of this compressor as well. All right, so now we got that compressor running 100% as well. So now all these compressors should be on and running. And what we want to do now is watch that suction pressure and make sure that it's dropping, which you can see that it is. Once we get down to about 10 PSI, 10 ish pounds, then we'll go ahead and turn off the suction to our circuit and then open that system up. Little pro tip when you're doing these, see how that disc is sticking out a little bit? It's gonna fight against me when I try to put it on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this stem all the way out. I'm gonna pull that stem out. What that's gonna do is that's gonna make this thing not wanna fight against me while I'm putting it in. And same thing up here, I'm gonna take that stem all the way out and that way it's not gonna wanna try to push against me while I'm taking those bolts out. It'll just make replacing these a little bit easier. That way you're not having to fight the force of that spring in there. 
So like I said, just a little pro tip for the day. All right, you can see here, we've got this suction pretty much as low as it's gonna go with just the compressors being forced on. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and start toggling off circuits, not toggling off my circuit, but toggling off some of these circuits to start getting that pressure and that suction header down. So I'm gonna toggle a few off and then come back over here and I'm gonna watch that pressure. Like I said, I'm looking to get below 10, preferably about five, but if I'm between five and 10 on there, then I'm pretty happy. So we're just gonna toggle off circuits until we get down to where we wanna be. And it'll happen pretty quick. All right, so you can see we got it at about eight pounds. Hey, you should be good. So you can see we're dropping. I don't like to get it too low, so once I start getting too low, I'll go ahead and turn one back on. Turn a couple back on just to get that suction pressure back up. I just, we're good? All right, so. We got that pressure down over here, so we're gonna go ahead and get the pressure out of this line. And then we're gonna start taking this valve apart. While he's doing that, I'm gonna come back over here and just turn all these circuits back on. Turn these circuits back on, and then something else you don't want to forget is taking these compressors out of manual override. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so we got this old valve body out. Just need to get all this cleaned up, make sure we get all this old gasket off and that surface cleaned up. We already got all these new gaskets lubricated up. So once we get that cleaned off, then we'll be ready to put this new one in. Careful of that O-ring. Yeah. All right, we got this thing back on. Just need to put that on there. We'll go ahead and energize that solenoid. Close this, we'll do a purge from the suction through the liquid, do a quick leak check on this, and then assuming we're good, we'll be ready to rip. Remember, always with the new straighters. Every time you take a straighter out, put a straighter back in, a new one back in. It's just that cheap insurance for you. Turn it back on. All right, got those straighters back in. Let's go ahead, turn this circuit back on. Did you already close that? Yep. We got that autoed back in. So we'll let this thing run for about 10 minutes before we start adjusting that EPR. All right, so we're gonna spray this thing with bubbles. Go ahead and do a quick leak check on it with bubbles. Make sure we're not leaking. Make sure we ain't got nothing going on. Pretty much this whole valve, we're just gonna spray this whole dang thing because we had it all apart. Now we're just watching for any bubbles. Looking pretty good. All right, so this thing's been running for a minute. Um, we're gonna start adjusting this, this stem. So right now, this thing's all the way out. We're running at rack pressure, right? So there should be no difference between the rack pressure and the pressure that's on uh, this valve, right? So if you remember the other day, that RS sheet showed a 32 degree EVAP. So if we come over to this PT chart, we look up 32 degrees, that's gonna be 72 pounds. So we wanna set that EPR to 72 pounds, All right? Easy enough, all we gotta do is take this thing in till we hit 72 pounds and then we'll let it run. And this thing should adjust a lot better than that other one uh, because now it's properly sized. A 
little movement out of that needle. And you can see now, as I'm moving this thing, that needle's actually adjusting. Right, I open it, boom, that needle goes down. I close it, that needle goes up. That's what you should be looking for when you're adjusting these EPRs. If you remember that last video I had with this EPR, I did like two full turns and that needle barely moved. So this is more what you're looking for where you adjust that, that stem or that bolt and that pressure goes up. It should be proportional. The amount that you turn that stem, the amount the pressure goes up on the needle. So let's go ahead and get this to 72 and then we'll let it sit. All right, so this thing's been running for a little bit now. Um, I decided to set it at 70. That's a 30 degree coil as opposed to 72, which is 32 degrees. Uh, last thing we're gonna do is go ahead, put it in a defrost, make sure it holds in defrost. And then uh, that's it. That'll be all for this one. So uh, as always, I appreciate the support. Make sure you like, subscribe, share. And uh, thank you, later.